So welcome everybody to the um, Excel fundamentals or Excel basics. Um, I'm just going to take you guys through um, some of the things that I have been working on for quite some time. Um, when we start at Excel, right, what it, what, what, what it will do is it will take us straight into our template viewer. And in our template viewer, what we have is we've got all of our templates. Um, we've got our little sidebar here on the left-hand side where we can go to our new button and it will give us additional templates. Recents will show us all of our recent documents that we've already opened. What's so cool about this, it will also show us the location. We can, of course, pin it down for, for, to keep it there permanently. Or if we don't pin it, um, what happens is, is that it works on a, um, I think it keeps up to about 30 documents. First in, first out. If you come to number 31, of course, the top one or the oldest one will fall away. And yeah, it will show you how long ago these ones are sitting on your recents. Okay, there's also the shared option, which I'm not going to cover today because, well, that's a little bit more advanced in, in that regard. And then, of course, there's the open if you want to open new documents. Um, let's go to new quickly. Now, under new, you will see there's a, a whole variety of different templates. Now, what these templates are is basically um, pre-populated spreadsheets, and it will where you can actually just put in your own figures and so on and we'll do the calculations and so on on its own. Um, what I, uh, you can go in and play around with these things, but the best way to learn how these, these um, templates work is to actually start working with a blank workbook. So I'm just going to double click and go into the blank workbook. Okay, so it will um, open the blank workbook. And before I get started within the spreadsheet, let me quickly take you guys into the, um, the inner workings of this um, um, workbook. So a workbook um, consists of many worksheets, right, first of all. And um, um, at the bottom, you can see that uh, it starts off only with one worksheet. So this entire worksheet is my worksheet i can actually add in more worksheet by just clicking on the plus and adding more but that is on the worksheet let's quickly go and look at the interface okay now under your interface what you have is you've got um this tab bar at the top which gives you um your home insert draw page layout formulas data and so on right now each button gives you what they call a ribbon. Okay, so this entire set piece is the ribbon for home. As you can see, it's underlined. So now, um, if I click on the insert button, it will give me the layout for my insert. It, if I click on draw, it will give me the ribbon for the drawing, page layout, and so on. Okay, so as you guys can see that um, and the beginning, Excel overwhelmed me because, you know, if you look at other Mac applications versus Microsoft ones, if you click on a certain button, you just see buttons and you don't know who's who in the zoo and you can't make out who's who and it's the learning curve is, is a little bit much longer than that of the other applications. However, this is a powerful tool nonetheless, but you can build it in such a way where you can have... Um, you don't eat the elephant or you're taking it piece by piece. So you can actually break all of your buttons down into certain segments. So in other words, here you can see there's a little small line that separates this lot from that lot. And there's a line that separates that lot from this lot and so on. Now people don't see that. Now when you, when you see it, it's actually when you can label those sets. So what I normally do is in this regard, I would go to my Excel at the top, preferences, and under my preferences, I will go to my, my view preferences. And right at the bottom under my view preferences, you see the in a ribbon show. Now, I don't want to show the developer tab. That is for way more advanced um, 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 Excel. I want to show my group titles. So if I click on that and I close this down, you will see that there is now a little label under each of those sets. Okay. 
So it's easy just to understand, okay, this is to do with my clipboard, that is to do with my fonts, that's to do with my alignments. And if you go to each and every one of them, then you can actually see these all different sets. So it makes it much easier to understand. Now, um, now that we've, we've, we've got that out of the way, let's take a deeper look into um, the different views that I can have for Excel. So, um, when Alan did numbers with us the last time, he said, you know, you have this huge um, spreadsheet and the spreadsheet, you cannot actually break down in different um, um, pages. You can't see it in page layout. You can't do all of those things. That is not entirely true, guys. You can work in Excel in terms of seeing a page layout view, right? And this brings me to, to the next part of your layout. So if you're going to be building a spreadsheet only for you and you don't need to put it on pages in future, fine, you can just go ahead and start working with it. I like to work in such a way where I've got both options. You know, as human beings, we like to have our cake and eat it at the same time. So I like to work in that way. So now what I normally do is if I go to my views, Right, I can go to my views at the top, guys, and these will give me my different views in terms of how I can yeah, under workbook views. You see how easy it is? I can spot it like a mile away. So there's my workbook views, but I don't actually need to go specifically to that tab button to access this ribbon. If I look at the bottom of, of Excel, there I've got those views as well. So here you can see I'm on my sheet view or my normal view. I can also go to my page layout view. So if I click on my page layout view, you'll see that my sheet is now broken down into different pages. Now I can choose whether I want it in um, portrait mode or even landscape. So if I go to my page layout tab and under my page layout, I can change my orientation to say landscape, okay? So now it gives me the, the parameters in terms of um, the page that I can that I can work on, right? But say now, you know what? I like to have it this way, but I actually want to have it in my sheet. But at the same time, I want to know where my page break is. Sure, I can do that too. So as you can see, my page break is also okay. If I switch back to my sheet, okay, it doesn't show me any indication that there's a page break. But hold on, if I go to my Excel. Preferences again, under the view button, I can click on page break. If I click on that, now I can see, you see there's a little dashed line. And remember my page ended up on K. So there I've got my dashed line, both horizontal and vertical to show me where my page break is, even though it is working within a full on sheet. So that makes the planning side even better. You know, so you can see if you're going overflow your page or you're still within the containment of your page. And now that we have that understanding, and this is what I like to do when I plan my document, right? And now I want to work. So guys, let's look at, into detail about the sheet itself. Now under the sheet, um, how a spreadsheet is built up is normally your columns and your rows, right? So the the columns here is, um, is marked as in alphabetical order, A, B, C, right up to Z. After Z, it goes to A, A, and A, A, or A, B, and so on and so forth. Um, you can go into all eternity. Don't ask me how many columns you can have. Your bottom, but I know it goes into the thousands. So you can run up a, a, a country with this thing. Um, uh, the same way with my rows. So my rows is goes all the way down to, well, it's in num numerical order. Again, it goes into the thousands, guys. But now where the columns and the rows converge, that is called a cell. Okay. And you will see that the cell, it gives the address. So there we eight, column eight converge with D, that becomes D8 as my cell label indicates in the top left right yeah by the name box now guys you can also 
um, um, select a whole range of cells. So if I click on say D8 and I go all the way down to F12, you will see that, um, oh, sorry, you will see that I've now selected that. And this is what they refer to as a range, okay? And my range starts from D, D5, as you can see, there's my active cell, and it ends off at F12, okay? Now, the way we normally write this in Excel, if I go to my formula bar, you will see here's my formula bar. If I click on it, this is the way we will write this. So we will say D5 through colon to F12. So remember that, guys, because we're going to do some more Excel training, um, lunchtime, lunchtime sessions, and we're going to go into formulas and functions, and then we're going to look at more at range, right? So this is how we're going to be writing a range. So um, that's just a quick example. But now let's go into adding in information into our Excel spreadsheet, all right? So what I was thinking about to use a good example, guys, I'm a big gamer, okay? So I spend quite a bit of bucks every year on games, right? That's my, I've got two hobbies, shooting and games. So I didn't want to go into shooting because I'm, um, yeah, you know. Um, so I'm rather gonna, gonna go into the other part. So now I'm gonna go into, um, I'm gonna start on A. And I'm gonna make this uh, games purchased in 2020. Okay, so as you can see, I've written this now. It's it's a it's a piece of text, and I've written it games purchased 2020, and it goes across A B, almost touching going over into C. Now, guys, one thing you must keep in mind is it doesn't, it's not sitting in B. It's actually starting an A and continuing A. It's overflowing into B. Just want to show you this quickly. You know, if I go into a B and I type Angelo, you will see that it's almost like A is slipping underneath Angelo. Okay? So it's not in B. And the way I know it is if I click on B, it shows me in my formula bar what I've written. I'm just gonna delete it again and there you go. And if I click on A, there it shows me on my formula bar what's been written there. Now, one thing you must keep in mind, I do have a choice in terms of how I want this to be displayed. I can either display it like this or I can text wrap it in the cell or I can make it the size of the cell. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna show you guys in a, in a minute how to do that. So, and in fact, let me go into it now. So if I go to home and I go to my, uh, let me go, just one sec, I'm just gonna expand my view so I can see more. So if I go to my home button and you will see there at the top, um, next to my alignment is the option that says uh, wrap text. Now, if I click on wrap text, it will actually um, force it into that cell or the text. If I go to um, antique wrap text and I go to shrink text, then it will shrink it down to, this, to the size of that cell. So you can see my text is quite small. But if I make the cell bigger, so will my text. Okay. Now, um, Talking about making the cell bigger, as you can see, I can just go to the lines of the cells and on of the lines of the columns and on those lines, I can just drag it out and it will become bigger, right? Now, you've seen it doing it with one, but say now I wanna do it with multiple, then what I can do is if I move my mouse pointer onto the columns, right? it will show like a black arrow. Now that black arrow means I can select it. Now after selecting it, I can select multiple. And now if I make the size bigger on any of those selected ones, it will do it with all, equal size. 
Okay. Now the same I could have done with my with my um, my rows as well. So if I go to my row and the line, you will see it comes like a black cross. If I go there, then it will only do that one. If I go and I move my mouse pointer onto it, the black arrow, and I highlight them, it will highlight all of them, and I can go to any of those ones. If I make the one bigger, it will do them all. Okay, so this is how you can make your cells bigger or smaller. Now keep in mind, as you make your columns bigger, it might overflow over your page break. So just be aware of that when you're doing that. So again, back to my text. So now if I go and I untick the string to fit, it will now bring it as a normal size. Now I'm gonna put in my columns, or my column headers that I wanna put in. So first of all, it's gonna be title. And guys, now if I want to go to the next cell, check this out. I want to go to the cell next door. I hit the tab key. Okay. So if I hit the tab key, it will jump to the next cell. So if I now, it's going to be title. It's going to be, uh, let me go with genre and tab again. So guys, say for instance, I wanted to go back. Okay. The shortcut key for that is hold down the shift key and press tab, then it will go back. Okay, that's the shortcut. Um, to go down a cell, you hit the return key or the enter key, it will go down. Guys, take a while, guess what it is to go up again. And if you guess shift return, you guess correct. So whenever you want to do the opposite, you just hold down the shift key. So hold down shift, if you hit enter, it will move back a cell. So um, right, it is tab, left is shift tab, enter is down, shift enter is moving upwards. So that is genre, and I've got, um, let me go with date, and I'm gonna go with vendor, and finally I'm gonna go with, uh, the one that hurts the most, price. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go, and now I want to make this character, this, this text stand out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it, and I'm going to maybe make the font a little bit bigger. So under my home ribbon button, under fonts, I'm gonna make that 16 point, and I'm gonna highlight actually all of this, and I'm gonna make this, let me make it 14 point. Okay, so, and I could have made it bold and so on and make this, let me make the italics so that it stands out. So now that I've got all of this in place, right? I can now start populating my, my, um, my cells. But this is the, the biggest thing, you know, people just dive in, ah, want to start doing anything. So what I like to do is I like to do, do put in the formats, you know, so that I can automate certain processes. So in other words, if I now go to price, I know price must be in currency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the column and I'm gonna go to, you see it under number, right? So I go there and I say, I want that actually as currency, right? But I might be doing formulas later on and I would like to separate the number from the actual currency value. So I'm going to go in with accounting instead. So what that means is if I should type in one, two, three, four, five, six, and I hit enter, you will see that it will put in the currency with my, my decimal point, etc. Okay. So it will automate that process and it will do it for the whole column going down into all eternity. Okay. So now that I've got all of that in place, um, I can do the same with my date as well. I can go to date, general, um, sorry, under my number, um, my category, and I can say I want it as a short date. So if I type in a date, then it will automatically put that date in in the version that, 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 that is specified. Okay, for now, just keep it as general. Now guys, first of all, um, the date I realized, oh Philip, I actually want it as my first column. No problem. 
So all I do is I go to my first column, I do a secondary click or right click on my mouse, and I say insert, and it inserts a new column, and I write date there, and this column here I'm just going to delete. Cool, okay? So under my date, I'm working with months. So now I'm gonna put in my months, I'm gonna start with, January, um, enter, and February, March, and home. So in this case, I'm not gonna start typing all the months. Excel's got something built in called autofill. So what I do is I select the first month, go to, you see that little black dot there, or that, that dot that stands up? If I move my mouse pointer onto it, it becomes a black cross. Now if I click and hold, and I drag down, it will autofill all the months here. Okay, similar to what we've done in, in, in numbers. Okay, I'm just gonna make my headers a little bit more bold so it can stand out separate from the others. And I'm gonna highlight it again and I'm actually gonna keep it, um, go into the paint bucket and I'm gonna give it a different color, okay? Now, after I've done all of that, I'm gonna now put in my titles, my genre, my vendor and so on. So guys, I don't want you guys to see me type all these things. Okay, so I'm gonna make it easier. This is something that 2019 allows you to do. I'm gonna to go to uh, insert. You see what I've done was, um, normally what I do is when it comes to my gaming, I uh, don't wanna call it an addiction, it's just a hobby. Um, so in my gaming hobby, I normally write down the stuff and I normally uh, you know, check out how much I spend every year on games. So let's go quickly see what I can do in regards to that. So now I've done it in, in, in Word. But as you guys could see in Excel, you can actually bring in information with using a picture. It does character recognition. Your pardon? So what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do a screenshot of this. Okay, so, um, screenshot guys, if you're not familiar with it, um, you can check out our video, which we look on screenshots. Um, alternatively, just hold on command alt and press number four. Now you'll see there's my cross here. I'm just gonna take my cross here and I'm gonna mark it over these. So there's my screenshot of that information. So somebody can send you a screen. If you've got 2019 or 365, somebody can send you a screenshot of um, a table with information in it. It can come from numbers, it can come from anywhere, um, but it must be in a table. If it's not, then it's gonna put it in to sequential order in Excel. So now that I've got that, I, it stays onto my desktop. I guess I'm just gonna minimize this. So now I'm gonna bring in that information. So here I'm gonna go to data from picture. It's under my insert tab button. And I'm gonna go picture from file. All right, so it's going to go in there and I'm going to my desktop, where it's sitting, here's my screenshot, and I'm going to click on open. Okay, so you will see it here on my, on my right-hand panel, it now brought it in, but it's bringing it in under review. Okay, so I'm saying, okay, cool, let me see what's going on here. So I go review. And it shows me there that it's Call of Duty. So I'm just gonna go, it's Y, and I accept that. Um, actually, Warzone is part of it. So I'm going to um, not put that in. So I'm gonna go take that out. I'm gonna go back there and I'm just type in war zone there. So you can fix all of the errors that your application picks up, right? That is correct, that is correct. I'm gonna go review again. Fallen order, that's fine. Go to the next one. Duty, there we go. Next one, Modern Warfare 2, that's fine. Battlefront, that's okay. Destiny me with a Y and racing, cool. So that's done. So now I'm gonna go insert data. Hopefully it's gonna come in correct. 
So stop four, let's review those ones quickly. Okay, that's done. Sorry, this image, this thing is in the way, guys. Apologies. I think that's why it's not accepting it. Accept, accept, accept. Cool. And select and close and we insert data. So now you can see it inserted the data into my spreadsheet, right? Not totally accurate, but it's better than me just typing all everything in, guys. Um, and now I can just fix certain things and so on. Like for instance, um, as I can see here, I've, in my document, I made it certain things free. So free can be zero, right? Um, I see it went in there and PlayStation went in here. So I can just uh, cut and paste certain things out and so on. So um, the way it came in, it wasn't actually all correct. But um, in fact, I'm just going to try it again one more sec, guys. I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to remove it. Let me try it one more time. So I'm going to go from file. Um, select that. Select the first one and open. Ah, okay, I'm just going to insert data. So anyway, yeah, now it's coming in the same way. Like it's fine, it's fine. It's better than just inserting your data manually. So somebody can send you an image and you can just um, repair it. Some other demo gods is against me today. I practice this a, f a few times and somehow it's not, it's not falling into place, but that is, what 2019 has to offer in terms of um, somebody just sending you an image of the data um, and then you can just bring it in straight into your spreadsheet by just going into um, the data for from picture okay so guys that is my presentation today beautiful people thank you very very much you've been awesome i'm um yeah um i'm hoping that we're gonna do some more excel sessions i'm looking forward to doing the formulas and functions with you guys thank you cool goodbye and all of the best thank, thank you, you.